Tara's like, there you go. Getting tired of waiting on me. Hi. Hi. I don't know if I can think shit. What have What have you done? What I for a half a second there, I thought that was like a screen thing, like like. No. Uh, but no, really, you've actually you've put lights on your head. Yes. It's Christmas. Christmas Kwanzaa. Mukasistis. Yes, because I, I remember when the wise men approached the manger, they had blinking LEDs on their heads. I mean, they had to see their way across the desert. Duh. Oh. Actually, I think I've explained this before. Uh, that you know, as you all know, I was raised very Catholic. And we were not allowed to light the lights on our Christmas tree or on our house until Christmas Eve. What? Because the purpose. Yeah, we couldn't turn on any of the string lights, anything until Christmas Eve. Because the purpose of Christmas, of the Christmas lights, is to light the way for the Lord. It's like, Mom, are you really telling me Jesus can't find our house (laughs) until we turn the lights on? So. We had to, we, like, we decorated the whole tree, but we couldn't light it until Christmas Eve. My dad put up the lights, but they didn't turn on until Christmas Eve. Because the reason you put up Christmas lights is to light the way for the Lord. Yeah, we need to get Jesus a flashlight for Christmas. in our front window that said Jesus is the reason for the season. And all my friends called us the Jesus house. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, no, really, solstice is the reason for the season. And Jesus kind of stole it. Uh, but you know, but yeah. So I I am lighting the way for the Lord, right into my brain. Maybe He can fix it. I don't know. <laughs> it's a fixer upper, you know, a little bit of work. A little bit. All right. So it is. It is time. It is holiday time. Wow. It it's almost over. This 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 year. I know. This decade is almost over. I love. Everyone on everyone on social media, like last year, we were like, "Fuck you, 2018, come get some, 2019, come get some," and now we're all like, "Look, we don't want any trouble, 2020." <laughs> just, can't we all just get along? Like, we don't want any trouble. Uh, we just we just need some fucking rest. I know, right? Just I need I need just just chill. Everybody fucking chill out. Everybody fucking chill out. We just need a nap. <laughs> we just need to be off. Peace on Earth, really goodwill toward men, past, and a nap. Don't feel sorry for past Tara. Tara had a lovely childhood with wonderful parents. Tara's just less Catholic now. All right, let's 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 get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And uh, it is the holidays here, obviously. Um, the holidays. First off, well, uh, it is it is our goat watch, as as we are are, are want to do. Goat watch. Yep. Once again, for those of you returning this week, uh, the the Yavla, Yavla goat from Yavla, Sweden. It is a a a yeah. twenty six meter. That's about sixty feet. Or more than sixty feet, actually. It's a big foot. It's a it's a big goat. Sixty a big foot fucking goat. Straw goat in Yavla Squeed. It's Squeed. Squeden. 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 Yavla Sweden. That is that is uh, erected each and every year for the holidays. It's their tradition, and it's also a tradition for half the people in town to try and set the goat on fire. Which I I gotta tell you, when a giant goat is on fire, that's a hell of a thing to see. However, feels a bit David Lynchian to me. So far this year, let's check in with, with our with our goat friend at the uh, the live webcam for the goat. And there it is. This this is a live. This is I know it looks like a static image. It doesn't update off. This is a live image. It is five fifty four over in uh, Yavla, Sweden, and the goat is still there. Um. And you know what? This is the second year they've had the webcam, and I'm willing to bet the webcam is what is deterring the, the arson. Probably. I mean... Well, for the moment, because until someone 
someone is going to figure out that they can go viral by looking yeah. straight in the camera. I was just going to say, they don't have Americans who do their crime to post it to Facebook. So. Yet. They don't yet. So. Yet. I'm kind of, you know what? If it goes, if it goes this year without burning, next year it's got to burn. If it goes this year without burning, there's not going to be a next year because we're going to have Ragnarok. That's true. That, that and I true. don't mean the funny Taika Waititi version. What do they do with all the straw if it doesn't burn? I guess there are some really, really, really happy cows when this is all over. I guess, yeah. Uh, I can't eat anymore. I'll just eat a little more. No. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, let's, speaking of, it is the holiday season, the, the time of miracles. This is an absolute goddamn miracle. I don't understand how this fucking happened, but it's amazing. 64, 69 car pileup. Williamsburg, Virginia. No fatalities. Only two serious injuries. And everybody else, most everybody else is out of the, uh, out of the hospital already. How the fuck? Well, apparently it was very, very foggy and also very icy. So probably nobody was going that fast. Everybody in the channel is going nice. Wait, no, not nice. Because <laughs> it was icy and there was no visibility. So everybody was probably going like 20 miles an hour. Except, so. okay, what happened here? I'll tell you. I, I Here I'll tell you authoritatively, even though I know nothing of the incident and I was not there, but I am a white man, so I will tell you authoritatively what happened. As is your want. There were 68 people driving slowly and carefully on that bridge, on that interstate that day. And one motherfucker. Yeah, Probably. <laughs> All, all it, it takes is one motherfucker. All it takes. You're like, how does one motherfucker do? Have you ever driven on? Some people out here have never driven on ice. Yeah. Have, if you've never driven on, driving on ice is worse than driving drunk. Yeah. Because you are protect hands at ten and two, uh -huh. white knuckling that shit. You are you are like turn into the skid, turn into the skid, turn into the yeah. skid. You are prepared. You're coasting. You're not hitting the gas and you're not hitting the brake unless you absolutely have to. You are fucking idling everywhere. Yeah. Except. I mean, I'm in New Jersey where everyone acts like they've never driven on ice, even though it happens literally every year. We all act like we have Etch-A-Sketch brain that resets in the summer. Yeah, but, th but there's always, look at, I don't know how well you can see. This is, this is the view from, uh, yeah, there, there's a bit of, bit of a shredder shot of it. This is the yeah. view from the helicopter. It wasn't even all that spread out. It was all crammed up together. Yeah. It was one person rear-ended someone and then skidded and then someone skidded into them and bump, 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 bing, bump, bing, bing, bing. bump. All it takes for this crap to happen is one person to go, I'm fine. I'm f I know my car. I, I have to, look, I, I, yeah, sure, it's snowing and what, but, but I have places to be. Yeah. Place I have to get to the mall, because I haven't started my Christmas shopping yet. The place is, <laughs> yes! Yes! It was that motherfucker. Yep. It was the December 23rd motherfucker. Everyone who works retail, you know the December 23rd motherfucker. Yeah, and I've worked cosmetics retail, so the December 23rd husband? What do you mean you're out of this? I need it now. Yeah, you had it was your Black Friday special. Why is it gone? Uh, anyway, it, it is kind of a Christmas miracle. Nobody was killed. Nobody. And of yeah. the, there's only two people in serious condition that are still in the hospital, but everybody else is doing fine. Wow. Like I said, my guess is everyone was going pretty slow. Except that one motherfucker. Yeah, but I mean, it, it is an overpass, so there's always the chance somebody could go over. Thank God nobody did. Speaking of somebody who has been T-boned before, or technically kind of T-boned, someone ran a stop sign and hit us. Knocked me right off the road, slammed into it like a hydrant. As someone who has li lived through that shit, as much as you might like your car, you're damn glad you're alive. Fuck the car. Yeah. Because Jesus. 
Um. Speaking of that motherfucker, oh god, this story. Oh, you're moving here. You're moving here. So, oh, no. it's time to acclimate yourself to the state culture. You're moving to Colorado. Oh, no. Uh, Colorado radio host fired for saying he wanted, quote, nice school shooting to distract from Trump impeachment. Denver talk show host has been fired after saying he wanted, quote, a nice school shooting to interrupt coverage of, quote, the never ending impeachment of Donald Trump. Firing came just hours after a father who lost his son in a school shooting in Colorado earlier this year said the host should be fired. The fuck are everything to say in the state that had pretty much what we consider the first ground zero mass yeah. school shooting in modern, like, that kind of invented the mass school shooting. Columbine, Aurora. Like... These are not good reasons for your cities to be known, by the way. No. Chuck Bonnewell... That was an outlier at the time. Now, like, when's your number up? But at the time, that was horrifying, and that was not something that happened. So you should definitely know better. Chuck Bonnewell, co-host of a talk show on KNUS 710 AM, AM radio is, is evil, uh, made the comments Tuesday afternoon, coming back from a commercial break... <laughs> before being immediately interrupted by his co-host and wife, Julie Hayden. Quote, no, no, don't say that, Hayden said. Don't call us. Chuck didn't say that. Yes, he did. Your husband is awful. You're married to a terrible person. Yeah, you're married to a bag of shit. You're married to an actual bag of feces. Sorry to say. Chuck immediately said, immediately tried, Bonnewell immediately tried to backtrack, saying he was talking about shootings in, quote, which no one would be hurt. Oh, you know, it's one of those fun shootings. Yeah, like a paintball tourney breaks out. It makes sense. It's, it's one of those festive gunfights. Yeah. You know? Like you see on, on the CSIs and shit. And we should emphasize that he was hoping for this to distract from the impeachment of the president. I'm, he wanted some kids to get shot at their school to protect... A fucking sentient, self-tanned scrotal sack <laughs> <laughs> that lives up Vladimir Putin's asshole. Just to be clear on his excellent reasoning. She welcomes your comments. I do. I'm. You know what? I'm actually honestly surprised he got fired. AM radio. Colorado's pretty blue. Yeah. And also Columbine. Yeah, but AM radio. Like, they still take that pretty seriously there. You don't really get to fuck with Columbine there. Tune into AM radio on any given day. You will hear some yeah. of the worst things you have ever heard out of a human being's mouth. Yeah. I mean, I listen to a lot of AM radio in the car, but it's the local NPR station. So they're exceedingly civilized. But, yeah. Next up, um, this... The question is, did his wife get fired too? No, the show the entire show is over. Okay, good. His show's gone. It's gone. So um I don't know quite how to qualify this next story. I don't know if this is kind of okay boomer or or it's one of those closeted things again, or I don't I don't know what how to quite to put this, but this is actually kind of a little precious. Bless your heart. Um Professor charged with soliciting student with an Arby's gift card. Well, somebody saw EZA. A church leader and university professor. Always, in always, always a church leader. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm saying. Church, a church leader and university professor in northeastern Missouri have been charged with patronizing prostitution after allegedly trying to solicit an 18-year-old man on Grindr with offers of a gift card from Arby's and gas money. <laughs> People are already saying, we have the meats. That's not how that works. That's yeah, not that's how, not what that means. That's not what that means. 
Not what they mean by that at all. Investigation began after Truman State University police received a tip that Barry Poynier had been, quote, harassing male students and offering to pay for items for sexual favors. Poynier, 57, was allegedly contacting the students on the popular gay dating app Grindr. The Kirkville Daily Press reported the police officer set up a Grindr profile posing as an 18-year-old man and Poynier using the profile name DILF. I'm looking at your picture and no. No, yeah, DILF, that's more of a G-DILF, maybe. Maybe. But you're not even a silver fox there, dude. You got that? No. No. Not in those drill mount glasses. Oh. Um, reached out to express his interest in establishing, quote, a sugar daddy relationship. One year's accused of trying to lure the team with gift cards, clothing, and money. One year done in pri- had done in prior arrangements. Wait, somebody, somebody went, oh, daddy. Arby's. Yeah. Give me that beef and cheese, baby. Curly fraud. Well, they do have Pepsi there. <laughs> Pepsi and curly fries? Like, you're, I you're, might make out with you for Pepsi and curly fries. Your odd predilections, Tara. You, 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 you unsettle me at times. <laughs> That's my job. I just, That's why you have me here. My God, man. Just... I'm not saying I would blow you for curly fries and a Pepsi, but I might make out with you. <laughs> but that is, that is just, that is so cheap, though, the Arby's gift card. Come on now. On December 3rd, Pointer allegedly arranged to meet up at a gas station to refuel the teen's car in exchange for sex, saying that he might throw in an Arby's gift card. <laughs> LOL. So that was the tip. All right, let's be fair. Considering how much gas costs, size the gas tank, maybe. Always a fucking church leader. Always. Why is that? Man, just accept yourself. God's okay with it. I promise. Yeah. God's cool with it. I don't know if you've looked around at the everything, but God has bigger fish to fry. No shit. Oh, all right. Well, I initially, when we got this, when I got this next story, I thought for a second we got a rerun, but no, this is kind of a very weird. It happened again because of the context. You remember a few weeks back or probably not even weeks. I think, I think it was last week, but the, uh, the, the jackass kid who wanted his dad to buy him a BMW. So he scratched the one in the dealership. Yeah. Well, you're kidding. They're starting younger every year. Chinese dad sued after toddler scratches 10 brand new Audis in Ooh. showroom. Couple have been left with a hefty bill after their toddler daughter scratched pictures into the paintwork of 10 brand new Audi cars. Do we have any pictures of the scratches? No, we don't have them. You really can't take your eyes off toddlers for like a second. <laughs> My niece is four, and on Thanksgiving morning, she drew all over the walls of the house. And my sister is so type A that she made she made her husband paint over it before we all got there for Thanksgiving dinner. Shocked. Toddlers cannot be left unattended for even a second. Shocked parents later discovered that their tot had taken a stone and drawn into the paint of 10 new cars. The Chinese couple had accompanied a friend to the dealership, bringing their three-year-old along for the ride. According to the People's Court, the dealership... Uh, that, that's actually a Chinese People's Court, not the People's Court TV show. A, uh, the dealership sued the father, known as Mr. Zhao, for an initial sum of $41,000 saying the figure was an estimate it was an estimate and could increase based on further evaluation of the de- damage done the business argued and this is this is kind of fucked up uh, not not on the business's part but on the law's part yeah the business argued the vehicles could not be sold as new cars once they had repainted them because if they did so they could be sued for false advertising be made to compensate three times the purchase price of the car the cars could therefore only be sold as used vehicles they managed to get it Reduced the 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 uh, the uh, chart the, the the cost reduced to fourteen thousand dollars, but still, 
Yikes. The thing is, like, how much were you not watching your child that she had the opportunity to acquire a sharp rock and to face ten, ten cars? cars. It's not one car. Ten cars. She's going over and doing murals on every fucking car in the show. I'm not like, just... You were ignoring that kid. Well, all right, let's be fair. Not just the parents were either. That right. kid is that kid was like solid snake sneaky. You know, freaking like I'm not one of those people that don't bring your kids to public places because you literally have to. You can't exist without bringing your kids to couple of public places. But you have to watch them. I no, I've got to give it the hand of the kid cuz nobody else in the showroom noticed this shit. Nobody who worked in there have- they might have noticed, but here's the thing. As someone That's who has worked true. in retail and dealt with children who I'm pretty sure were actual demons from the pit, there's very little you're allowed to do. Yep. You can't you cannot fuck with other people's kids. No. You cannot you can't it's not even like you can't say, Hey, you shouldn't do that. You're not parents will fucking lose their shit at you if you're right. like, How dare you talk to my child? Like, even kids climbing on stuff were like, Honey, you can't do that, you're gonna get hurt, and their mom's yelling at me for talking to their kid that way. And I'm like, I don't want your child to break his leg. Um, Sorry. ma'am, ma'am, she set the carpet on fire. Yeah, but it's my kid, so fuck you. Yeah. Oy, so man. they might have noticed, and not. I don't know what the customer service culture is like in China, but at least here, it's entirely possible that they noticed. Drag- and there wasn't really much they could do. Dragon Disaster said, "This kid was on a mission. She was." She's going to be like a fucking Warhol when she grows up. My God. She's going to be Banksy. Sit, no, right? Am I right? She's like a three... Fuck your capitalism. <laughs> Banksy somewhere is going, God damn it, I got to sue that little kid. I know. Banksy's like, why didn't I think of that? What the fuck? That was so cool. uh, Next up, uh, it, it, it's 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 uh, the holidays, so it's time for home and hearth. You know, everybody comes home for the holidays. Except... When um, when someone has demolished your house by accident. Detroit's largest demolition contractor demolishes the wrong home again. It's the again. The largest contractor in Detroit's <laughs> demolition program is facing suspension again after it tore down the wrong house for the second time in 18 months. Detroit-based Adamo Group has been awarded more than $58.6 million to perform thousands of federally funded and city-funded demolitions since 2014. The company has performed several large-scale, high-profile demolitions, including fulfilling the $5.9 million contract to tear down the former Joe Louis Arena. City officials confirmed Adamo tore down the wrong, host, uh, wrong house and the uh, company received a violation notice. The contractor has seven days to appeal. Um... Adama was awarded a $25,000 contract to demolish a fire-damaged home at 14461 Alma on June 18th. On November 22nd, the uh, Adamo instead tore down the structure at 14661. Both are Detroit Land Bank Authority-owned structures. So instead of 14461, they did 14661. Imagine being the people that live at 14661. The company did not notify the city or state until last week. And they did this on December 10th. Can you even imagine, like, you go out to run errands for a day and you come home and your house no longer exists? I mean, not just no longer exists. Look at that picture. I mean... No more house! I got my cats, so I'd be going John Wick on some motherfuckers. Do, do you do you see that picture? Scroll down. No more house. House gone. House vanish. That's like okay. You I, you're not gonna remember this because you, you don't give a shit about Star Trek. But those old episodes of Star Trek: Next Generation, the the, the hints of the Borg, where they were like scoop entire colonies out of the planet's surface. I was thinking Sokovia. Yeah. Oh yeah, that too. Or or poltergeist. You remember that? Fucking the end of yes. poltergeist in the fucking house. You're like Except I don't see any fucking skeletons in there. So no. yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you come home to that shit. What are you supposed to do? Who do you who do you call? Do you call yeah, who do you call in the event of your house just up and fucking disappearing? Hello, Mr. Police, my house is gone. My someone <laughs> stole my house. Someone stole my fucking house. 
Oh! What do you do? How do you not double check that? Ch and also, like, it, if they got the contract because the house was fire damaged. This house isn't burned. Yeah, who cares? But that one is. Yeah, who cares? I, 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 I gotta get, I gotta get my kids after work, man. We're on a schedule. Let's just go. I don't want overtime. Let's fucking do this. But let's fucking do it, I said. Fire that fucking bulldozer. Let's get this shit done with. But you remember last time we... I don't want to... Don't talk... Do, 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 do. Get the shit done. Just saying, maybe we should double check the paperwork, man. This is some Dunning-Kruger bullshit. My God. Yeah. Finally this week, um, from the department of... Wow, really? You had one job. This happened in Mexico this week. We got and we got video. Let's let's have a look you mean at the it. The last story wasn't from that department. Mm -hmm. Here's some video here. Um, this one it comes from Mexico, and you're watching two Carnival Cruise. Oh. Yeah. Hold on, let me get you the, the link here. Just, just, it's it's the it's the smash into it and then just drag along. Yeah. And they said it was like the wind kicked up, and I'm like, those are floating cities. Yeah, they what wind? They have a fucking all right. And I you have to love NPR. Their opening line. Who wrote this? Colin Dwyer at NPR. The opening line of the story is ship happens. <laughs> <laughs> that at least is one lesson to be learned from an accident Friday at the port of uh, Cozumel, Mexico, where one Carnival cruise ship ran into another while trying to dock. Carnival Glory, a 952-foot vessel, raked the bow of the 963-foot Carnival Legend, which had been stationary in port, when their counterpart made crunching, cacophonous contact. This guy is writing it. He is he is killing yeah, it with his article. Yeah, he's got the alliteration going. Dang gum. Carnival Glory appears to have sustained damage to its aft decks in the incident. Luckily, Carnival, the world's largest luxury cruise line operator, tells NPR that just six guests have reported minor injuries, nothing else. Also lucky, a witness shot video of the incident as it unfolded. Wow. You, you, I used to really want to go on a cruise. And the past few years, with them capsizing and everyone shitting their brains out. And yeah, you remember all that? Yeah, Ooh. and then like we watched Hassan Minaj's show, and he did a whole thing about how cruises are terrible, and if you get murdered, probably nothing will be done about it. And now I'm like, you know what? No, they're just like they're they're like floating horrors, is what they are. Yeah, I I just I don't. How you this is your own this is your job is to move the boat without putting the boat into things. Yeah. You just two two objects of mass cannot occupy the same space. You are trained and paid not to put the boat into another boat. That's literally like the most important part of your job. It's not even like you're not you don't have to worry about the buffet and shit. Other people have yeah. to worry about that you shit. You just have to not hit things with the boat. You just have to not hit I I cannot even imagine being on the boat when that shit happens. This is I, 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 I if I was there, I would I don't even care this is just like a minor scrape. I'd be like Poseidon Adventure where shit was going down, you know? <laughs> You'd be repelling down the side of the boat. We gotta get to the top of the boat! We gotta get to the top of the boat! It just It's just the back. Of the, it didn't even come anywhere near us. We gotta get to the top of the boat. Yeah, it didn't come anywhere near them on the Titanic either, did it? <laughs> Look what happened to those people. Leo died. Really? There was room on that fucking door, man. There absolutely There was, was fucking room on that door. She just she just didn't want to have to deal with her remember, vacation fling once she got home. Remember, that was told from Rose's perspective. All I'm saying is unreliable narrator. <laughs> I'm I'm just saying. There was fucking room on so, that. You fucking know, you go on vacation, you have a fling. You don't think you're ever gonna see them again, but then like everybody on the boat dies except for like a hundred people. So like you're not gonna be able to avoid him. 
<laughs> so like, oh, darn, the door wasn't big enough. He died. That's so sad. There was room on that fucking door. Fucking Rose, man. <laughs> no, seriously, I just... It, how high... You have all... I, I, I am imagining the, the, the control room on one of these boats being like all computers and 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 instruments yeah. and telling you radar and sonar and shit telling you don't put the boat here and you put the boat the one place you weren't supposed to put the boat and like literally they said like oh well the wind kicked up and i'm like i didn't see a hurricane i know was there a hurry was there a fucking hurricane going on there <laughs> those boats are enormous right Although, of course, maybe I'll, I'll be the first to admit I might completely misunderstand how wind and nautical objects interact. Yeah. But still, here's the, all right. Here's the here's the, the existential question. Your boat hits your boat. Who do you sue? It's your own employees. Well, you fire them. You fire them, but you sue both. <laughs> is there a DUI for boat captains? There is. There is. Because I think when that cruise ship capsized a few years ago, that was the thing. Mm -hmm. And that captain was charged. You sue the wind. That will probably work, I'm sure. Yeah, good luck with that. I, I, I guess the first thing we learned this week, the important thing we learned this week, is there's fucking room on that fucking door. Yeah. Fucking rose. There was yeah. fucking. Or like, why couldn't you take turns? Yeah. Like you get you get ten minutes. I get ten minutes. Like you could have made that work. You just didn't want to. Yeah. Um. We've learned that sometimes you come home and the house is gone. That's a thing that can happen. I don't like that being a thing that can happen. <laughs> it's like I'm going to Walmart. Come back. Whoa, shit. There's no house. I wonder if you actually, for I, I can imagine myself in that situation, I'd be like, wait a minute, did I come to the right place? I would be backtracking and be like, am I sure I turned down the right street? I'm sure I would immediately be frantic about my cats. That's true, yeah. Ugh. Um, We've learned you gotta watch your damn kids. Jesus Christ. They, yeah. they are little destruction ninjas. Yes. They're little psychopaths. Covered in drool and bad ideas. I get a tangent. I get a tangent this time. When I was a, when I was very small, I think I was like six years old, if not smaller. My mom was working at a stationery store, and she brought me to work one day. Oh. And then she found out that I discovered how the pens worked. <gasps> and there's a whole bunch of stuff was drawn in, and she's like, "Jesus Christ, kid." <laughs> She did. She turned away for like five seconds and was like, "Well, there goes That's my paycheck this week." That is all it takes. Um, we've learned that just because Arby's has the meats does not mean you get. It. It's not. That's not what they mean. That's not how that they works. They want no part of your weird sex transaction. Alter <laughs> to the challenge going horse but draw dicks. No, I was six. I didn't even know what. I didn't even quite understand dicks at that point. Um. We have learned that uh, AM radio is a cesspool where it's only rarely do people get what they ha what they deserve coming to them for what they say there. Yes. Um. And, and finally, we have learned um, all it takes is one motherfucker. All it takes is one motherfucker. All it takes is, my God. It's it's th that whole drive defensively thing. It's not a matter of being passive. It's a matter of you cut. Other motherfuckers on the road do not care. The psychos. Right. You the have to assume that everyone else on the road is a psychotic moron who is also drunk. And you have to drive accordingly. <sighs> it, I mean, well, it's, that's how you assume how the road works, and that's how Twitter works. So, Yes.